If you had to pick only three qualities to look for in your next family crossover, what would they be? Most likely spaciousness, safety, and fuel efficiency are right at the top of your list. Now, of course, there are many other factors to consider when you're buying a new car, but those are the driving factors between a lot of family crossover purchases. The Subaru Forester has long rated highly in most of those objective measurements, but it hasn't always matched up to the style, refinement, or features list of some of its competitors. It's currently the 10th best-selling crossover in the United States, which is certainly not a bad place to be, but obviously there's room for improvement. Can this revised 2017 Forester catch up to its competition? How does it look? The Forester is absolutely function first, form second. The 2017 model has a restyled nose, new lights, and some other visual tweaks, but overall it's a bland, generic crossover shape. I don't think it's unattractive, but there's no real strong design statement made by this Subaru. Personally, I still miss the more wagon-like original version, but today's Forester fits in with the modern trend toward tall, upright, rounded crossovers. How's the storage? At about 32 cubic feet with the back seats raised, the Forester's trunk is roughly average for its class. Now, what I really like about the Forester's trunk is that there's a really low liftover height and there's a wide, tall opening. It's also really easy to lower the back seats using these little switches. Once you do, there's enough space to put bulky items like a mountain bike or something similar. And isn't it really fitting for a Subaru to have a rubber trunk liner? That's perfect when you've got a muddy Labrador or hiking boots to throw back there. The center console has a cubby with a change tray that also hides the USB ports. The door pockets are generously sized to hold water bottles, and a tray below the center stack will hold a phone, wallet, or kit can. In the back, there are also big door pockets, plus cup holders in the armrest, but no USB ports or power outlets. Is it roomy? The Subaru Forester is really roomy and very tall inside. I can raise the driver's seat far higher than I really need, which could be a plus for shorter drivers. And because the belt line is so low, you have a really commanding vantage point. It's also worth noting just how significantly opting for this cool panoramic sunroof cuts into headroom, by about an inch and a half for the front seats. The back seats provide plentiful legroom and lots of width for seating three people, though the seats don't recline or slide, unlike some of the Forester's rivals. How does the interior feel? I don't think the Forester has the best interior that you can find in the compact crossover segment. There's nothing in here that feels like it's gonna fall off or feels really, really cheap, but as I look and poke around the cabin, the materials just seem a little bit under par compared to some of its competitors. Now on the pro side, everything is laid out really, really simply. All the gauges and controls are legible and really easy to use. So it's very functional. It's just not the prettiest interior you can get for the money. Is it well equipped? As we're testing the fully loaded Touring, we have all sorts of great toys on this Forester, including the EyeSight Active Safety Suite that includes adaptive cruise control, plus dual zone climate control, a 440 watt Harman Kardon sound system, and Subaru's Starlink telematic system. How's the infotainment system? Just like the Forester in general, this seven inch touchscreen gets the job done really well without a lot of flash or fanciness. The navigation, phone, and music functions all work fine, but it's neither the quickest nor the prettiest infotainment system available. Unlike pretty much all of its competition, the Forester does not support Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which is fast becoming inexcusable given how popular that feature is becoming in the car market in general. Is it a good daily driver? A common complaint with the old Forester was that it was really noisy. There was a lot of engine noise and road noise and wind noise. So for 2017, Subarus addressed that with a lot more sound insulation, including thicker window glass. The effect is great. This is so much more subdued now. The ride is really comfortable too, and overall the Forester is really easy to drive. 
Perhaps the greatest thing about the Forester as a daily driver is how great the visibility is in all directions. There's probably more window glass in this car than in my apartment. You can see so well in every direction because the pillars are really thin, the belt line is low, and the windows are really tall. That's a huge, huge help, especially in city driving when you're trying to navigate in busy traffic. Is it fun to drive? We're driving the Forester 2.0 XT, which means it's got a turbocharged two liter engine that's not too dissimilar from the one in the WRX. And there are other changes too. We've got paddle shifters, there's a boost gauge, there's larger brakes and stiffer suspension springs compared to other Foresters. But despite all that, the answer is still no. Even with 250 horsepower, the Forester's not really that quick, um, and the handling's still a little bit vague and floaty at times. I've been playing with all the different electronic driving modes and using the paddle shifters, and I certainly appreciate the extra power of the turbo engine, but fun to drive, that's a little bit of a stretch for this one. Here's another thing. Subaru used to sell its turbocharged Foresters with manual transmission. They were great, they were quick, they were a lot of fun. They were kind of like an even more practical WRX wagon. Now you can only get it with this CVT, and I think that's just a really good sign of how this car has morphed away from being kind of a weird, funky outlier to just another normal family crossover. How's the fuel economy? This turbo model sucks down gas at the rate of 23 miles per gallon city and 27 mpg highway, and it requires premium fuel. For buyers who get the standard engine, Subaru has actually improved fuel economy a little bit this year, to 26 mpg city and 32 mpg highway. That's pretty good for a crossover that comes standard with all-wheel drive. And those ratings are actually a little bit better than all-wheel drive versions of the Honda CRV and Toyota RAV4. How much is it? As is often the case, we're driving a fully loaded car. This Forester 2.0 XT Touring lists for $37,000. Overall, Forester pricing with the non-turbo engine runs from about $23,000 to $32,000 before options, roughly equivalent to its competitors. The turbo model starts at $30,000. What are the negatives? The Forester looks frumpy, both outside and on the inside. It doesn't have the greatest infotainment system, and it lacks some of the G-Wiz tech features that we expect from cars in this segment. And even in this turbo model, the Forest is really not that much fun to drive. Who should buy it? Of course, there are a lot of stereotypes about the Subaru Forester only being for active, outdoorsy types. And if that's you, then you're gonna love it. But frankly, the Forester is great for anyone who values really practical aspects in their family crossover, things like visibility, spaciousness, and fuel efficiency. The 2017 model is the most well-rounded Forester I've ever driven, and so long as you're not looking for more style or a plusher interior, it's definitely worth considering when you're shopping. If you like this Why Buy video, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see a new one every Thursday. And if you like this t-shirt I'm wearing, check out motorstore.com. Our sister site has all sorts of branded racing and team apparel.